Matt, welcome to 49ers Live. We're so happy to have you for this recap show. Lindsay, I'm so thrilled to be here because it means that we're recapping the season. Uh, all the games that uh, lead it up, led up to this point are over in the rear view mirror, including week 18. And now the real fun, or I guess for 49er fans, the real stress begins. I think the real stress is probably a good way to word it. But before we move on to playoff mode, Let's talk a little bit about Week 18. In any other year, a loss to the Rams in the regular season finale would hurt. It would sting. It would mean a lot. In 2023, that was not the case. 49ers were the number one seed as of Week 17. So despite taking a loss in that final game of the season, in what ways did the 49ers come out on top? Well, they came, came out on top because it doesn't look like uh, there were any significant injuries, you know, injuries that'll carry over into the postseason. And I was going to say in a lot of ways, but probably in every way, that was the main goal was just to enter the playoffs in a better spot than where they were when the season, when the regular season ended. So, you know, there seems to be optimism that Eric Armstead will be back or have a good chance of being back. You know, some of the guys that were held out uh, due to injuries for uh, week 18, like Christian McCaffrey. I mean, the week leading up to that game against the Rams, he said that he 100% could have played if he needed to play. And then a couple of guys who were late scratches, like George Kittle and Dre Greenlaw, uh, you know, that was more precautionary. And all these things are probably – you know, kind of uh, contingent on just how the next few days, how next week goes, uh, how this week goes, how next week goes. But it, it really looks like uh, the four yards are in a good spot as far as being able to have all their players available. I guess the only player that I can think of, the starting player, you know, who uh, was injured during the season and who won't be available for the postseason is Talano Hufanga. And and let's let's not sugarcoat. I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, he was an all-pro player last year in his first year as a starter. Uh, but I think they feel good about where Jair Brown was, and he missed some games late in the season. He should be back. Um, so they, they kind of covered themselves pretty well as far as having a guy like Logan Ryan, who's played a lot of football, uh, a veteran guy, has a Super Bowl ring in his safe deposit box. Uh I think the 49ers feel good and, and have reason to feel good about where they are entering the postseason. Another bright light coming out of that Week 18 game was quarterback Sam Darnold. Hadn't started in almost a year since he was last with the Carolina Panthers. Comes out with the 49ers starters, at least most of them to start the game, leads back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. How meaningful were those Week 18 reps in the case that he should be needed down the line? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, it shows that, um, you know, that, that season isn't lost. I mean, obviously, you don't ever want to go to your backup quarterback, and especially when your starter is somebody like Brock Purdy, who it will be on the uh, on the very short list of MVP candidates. I mean, I, I would expect him to be one of the finalists for that award. Um, he's had a phenomenal season, and so you're going to take a hit anytime you have to go to somebody else. But, you know, Sam Darnold has a lot of experience in the NFL. He made his 56th career start on Sunday in Week 18, and it's it's been a, a bit of a roller coaster for him. Uh, that's probably putting it mildly uh, through his NFL career. Uh, but he had the advantage of coming to the 49ers without a whole lot of expectations. Uh, you know, he wasn't the number three pick in the draft where the entire hopes of a franchise was kind of put on his shoulders. Um, I thought he played well. You know, I think he made one critical mistake at the end. You know, even if he never steps on the field again, talking about Sam Darnold, uh, th th it'll be interesting to see what happens the off in the offseason. Will Sam Darnold want to return to the 49ers? Will there be a better opportunity for him out there? I don't know. Uh, but I think that what Sam Darnold showed behind the scenes would prompt the 49ers to want him to be back in 2024.
You touched upon Brock Purdy. What a tremendous season he had. He finishes as the 49ers single season passing record holder. He was the top vote getter in the Pro Bowl fan vote, named to the Pro Bowl, also finishes top in passing yards per attempt in the league. Just a tremendous outing for him in 2023. And like you mentioned, on a short list of MVP candidates, the challenge is now to just get him ready for the divisional round. In what ways are the 49ers setting him up for success during this stretch without a, without a game? Well, you know, it's funny, Lindsay, because, you know, I, I just kind of look back at where he was through the offseason. You know, he did not take part in minicamp or OTAs or any of that. Um, he didn't play a whole lot, you know, it, training camp started with him being, you know, practicing two days, sitting out a day. Then when the, the game started, I think he attempted 14 passes in the, in the, in all of the preseason games. I think you're right. And it was then, limited. <laughs> yeah, and then in the final preseason game, he attempted nine passes and then it was 16 days off before the start of the regular season. What happened on the 49ers' first drive to open the season? Brock Purdy and the 49ers marched down the field, and he throws an eight-yard touchdown pass to Brandon Ayuk. Didn't so, skip a beat. <laughs> didn't have any rust for the first snaps of the regular season after months and months and months of relative inactivity then I think he'll be just fine after starting 16 regular season games, being under a lot of pressure, and now, you know, having this basically a three week break for him. Lindsay, one of the, you know, how I, I'm, you always see me, I always see you several hours before game time. Mm -hmm. um, on Sunday at Levi Stadium, I got there even earlier than, than normal because I, I wanted to be around and kind of see the, the early games. Almost the, the moment, I mean, we, I almost knocked him over going through those double swinging doors at Levi Stadium. I don't know if that's something you want to admit, Matt. <laughs> almost. Almost. And I said I did knock him over. I wouldn't <laughs> admit it. But the fact that I almost did – Four and a half hours before game time, mm -hmm. he went into the locker room, got got in his workout attire, and went out there and got a full workout in hours and hours before the game. So the reason I'd say this isn't because I'm bragging that I almost knocked out the quarterback. It's because I'm pointing out that his, his work day, he knew it was going to be limited. You know, the three hours of work that he normally would have from 125 to, you know, 425, he wasn't going to have that. He was going to have middle work on the sideline, mm -hmm. listening to the play call, you know, doing all that stuff. But from the physical aspect of it, he wanted to remain sharp by getting in a full day's work. And I think that was the emphasis last week in practice, and that's the emphasis this week in practice from you know guys like Fred Warner. I mean, I could hear Fred Warner out on the practice field reminding his teammates, let's get better today. Fred Warner ended up playing, I think, 11 snaps in that game. Uh, you know, Trent Williams was only out there for the first drive. So a lot of the their top-line players didn't see a whole lot of game action. But to get them ready for the first round, their first round of the playoffs, the divisional round, they took it very seriously of working hard and trying to get better when they knew that they weren't going to be playing much or in the case of Brock Purdy at all in that week 18 game against the Rams. And we'll hear more from head coach Kyle Shanahan later today, but I would say it's safe to assume that that is still very much the focus to continue getting better as they prep for that divisional round. Who they'll be playing is still very much a mystery. It's going to come out in wild card weekend, but there are four options. The Eagles, the Bucks, the Rams, or the Packers. Which matchup would present the biggest challenge for San Francisco at this point in the season? Well, Liz, I'm going to just flat out say it. It shouldn't matter. It should not matter. The 49ers are a really good team. They're set up well for the postseason. It shouldn't matter who they play if they take care of business they're going to be advancing to the NFC Championship game. That said, 
you know, I think on paper, they'd probably be the biggest favorite against the Packers. Uh, but if they play the Packers, it meant that the Packers went into to Dallas and pulled yes. off one of the great upsets. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think probably 49er fans don't want to see the Rams. I would say that's fair. That's a yeah, fair I, guess. I that's, I think that's fair. Uh, the, they know each other so well. You know, the, the, the Rams have – something you know they 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 finish really hot i mean the mm-hmm. rams what was it they won s- i think it's six of their last seven if i'm correct yeah and i'll say this Lindsay, the one loss was probably their most impressive game you know yeah, they, to the ravens <laughs> they went to the ravens yeah played them toe to toe that game went into overtime in baltimore and they lost lost on a punt return for a touchdown so the Rams are playing really good football um, with all their weapons. I mean, they have, you know, they still have Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams. They have uh, Matthew Stafford, who uh, will give the defense some opportunities, no doubt about it. But he can also, we saw week two, you know, how, how much he gave the 49ers defense fits. Uh, that's going to be just such an intriguing game on Sunday, seeing how he does against the Lions uh, going to face his former team. Um, you know, I, I don't know if the Eagles want to play the 49ers. I don't know if the 49ers want to play. I, it, it shouldn't matter, to be shouldn't. honest. It shouldn't matter. If if the 49ers take care of business, and, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's. I was talking to Fred Warner on the, the 49ers Talk podcast after the game. And he was like, it all comes down to three hours. You know, it's not a, mm-hmm. it's not a seven-game series. You know, the, the best one and team, done. One and done. The best team doesn't always win, but the best team in that three hour span moves on. And so, I mean, frankly, you know, we all remember Christmas night. Ravens are a really good team. 49ers committed five turnovers, did not get one takeaway in return. Let's face the cold hard facts here. If the 49ers lose the turnover battle, five nothing to anybody. It's hard to come back from that. They're going home, yes. That's the exciting part of the postseason. You mentioned that unpredictability. Whatever happens in those three hours, when you look at the NFC playoff picture, who's the team that maybe people are writing off but shouldn't? I don't know. I don't know if you can say anybody's writing anybody off, Um, at least as far as the the team I'm going to mention. Um because they're the number two seed, the Dallas Cowboys got worked by the 49ers earlier in the season. Week five. Week five. And they didn't look like they even belonged on the same field as the 49ers. Um, If if there's a rematch in the NFC Championship game, and there are only two teams, the 49ers, if they face them, it can only be in the NFC Championship game. That's Mm -hmm. Dallas and Detroit. If... If Dallas does what they should do on their home field where they've been very good, I mean, that would set up for an epic NFC championship game. uh, Yeah, we're calling back to historical matchups on that, if that's the case. I'm wearing the hat, the uh, the Dwight. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, that would uh, would be something. And I, I think that everybody would fall into the trap of, Oh, the 49ers have the Cowboys number. You know, Cowboys can't beat the 49ers. Um, you know, that, that's a dangerous trap to fall into. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I, like, again, I don't think anybody's saying, oh, the Cowboys don't have a chance. But I do locally kind of get the sense of, oh, the Cowboys can't beat the 49ers. You know, the 49ers are in their heads and all that. I'm just saying you might want to pump the brakes on that one. I think the Cowboys still have enough firepower and enough star power on both sides of the ball to, to make that a really good game. Well, thank you so much, Matt. And for everybody listening, make sure to also tune in to 49ers talk. I know I always do ahead of game day, lots of good information coming from Matt Mayoko and Jennifer Lee Chan. Thank you so much for joining us in this recap show. All right, Lindsay, always my pleasure.